What's good everybody, this is CP and today I'm gonna talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to talk about a few potential roster players who could be moved before the start of next season. Obviously heading into this season, Kyle Dubas has a lot on his plate and definitely one of the main priorities is to address goaltending. But like the last few seasons, cap space is once again gonna be a huge issue for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And heading into this season, one of the biggest questions is who is going to be the Leafs starting goalie? At this point, it seems like there's a good chance that Jack Campbell might be gone as the Leafs likely don't have enough money to outbid some of the other teams to keep him around. And if that's the case, let's say Campbell signs elsewhere. Do the Leafs have enough money to bring in another legit number one starting goalie? Secondly, Dubas might need to set some money aside to bring back a few RFAs, including Sandin, Kasha, Ingval, and if possible, Mikheyev as well. And realistically, Dubas has been at this job for a while, and quite frankly, this might be his last season to make the right moves before the Leafs look for a new GM. As a result, uh, one realistic option for Dubas is to shed some salary, in that it might be easiest for him to trade a few current roster players right now, especially if he wants a little bit more wiggle room to work with in free agency. One of the first names who Dubas might be willing to move is forward Alex Kerfoot. Now, just look at the Leafs roster. I don't expect Dubas to move out any of the big four, including Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander. In fact, I would be very, very surprised if he does this season. So by default, one of the names that makes the most sense for me is Alex Kerfoot. He's playing in his final year of his contract at a 3.5 million cap hit. And overall, it's fair to say that the Leafs offense is pretty stacked. So losing a secondary player like Kerfoot shouldn't be a major blow. In many ways, I think this move is a lot better than trading away a key player on the blue line or one of their top offensive guys. At the same time, some of the UFAs still unsigned might come at a little cheaper price point. So if Dubas does decide to commit to someone like Kasha or Ingvil or maybe Mikheyev, then perhaps moving away Kerfoot's 3.5 might be the right move to do. Obviously, Kerfoot has a modified no-trade clause, so he can't just be traded anywhere. He does have a 10-team no-trade list, which in some way is a small roadblock for Dubas when he's trying to make a deal. However, we can't forget that he is coming off a career year scoring 51 points in 82 games. And at a 3.5 cap hit, I would argue that he offers some pretty good value and shouldn't be too, too hard for Dubas to trade, especially if he puts in a little bit of work because there are a lot of teams around the league without an offense as potent as the Maple Leafs. And if they're looking to add some offensive depth, then Kerfoot would probably be a very solid top 6 to top 9 forward to add, as he's a proven scorer in the NHL who can get you around 40 to 50 points. The next current Maple Leaf roster player who I think could be traded is Justin Hall. Now, don't get me wrong, Justin Hall is a pretty important player on the Leafs' blue line. And he comes at a very, very good price point. He only comes at a 2 million cap hit, which is very, very decent for a guy who can give you a reliable 20 minutes a night on the blue line. Anyhow, he is turning 31 next year and becomes an unrestricted free agent at the end of next season. I suspect at his age, he's going to ask for an extension along with the raise. And to be quite frank, I'm not sure if the Leafs have enough money to keep him long term. Better, I think the question might be, do they want to keep him? Because right now, if we look at their roster, they have a few younger defenders coming up. Namely, a guy like Timothy Littlegren who looks like he's on the come up and is only getting better. Besides needing a new contract in two years, I think he could be that guy who steps up and plays a very important role for the Leafs in the next two to five years. Dubas and management probably wants to save some extra cash just to lock up an RFA such as Rasmus Sandin. And moving forward, it might be most logical for management to give both Sandin and Littlegren time to grow and play into a bigger role on the blue line for years to come. Right now, if we look at the Leafs decor, I would say that Morgan Riley probably looks like the one that's least likely to be moved in the short term. On top of that, I would say that TJ Brody and Mark Giordano should be pretty safe to stay for at least the next season. So once again, by default, I feel like a guy like Justin Hall might be one of the first to go. In my opinion, uh, moving him can potentially give Dubas and the Leafs three benefits. One, they can make room and give an opportunity for one of their younger defenders to come up and play more important minutes. Secondly, they could save some cap space for this season, as both Lilligren and Giordano are signed and make less money than Hall does this year. Lastly, they probably don't have to worry about losing Hall in free agency for nothing next summer, as we all know that he becomes a UFA at the end of next season. So there's always the possibility that he walks 
away from Toronto for nothing. And trading Hall could at least get the Leafs some assets, maybe a draft pick or two. And in my opinion, it doesn't hurt to stock up on some assets because you never know and it might come in handy in future deals. Overall, trading Justin Hall might be a riskier move than trading a forward like Alex Kerfoot. And losing Hall today might hurt the Leafs decor from day one at training camp, especially in the short term. Assuming a player like Sandine or Lilligren doesn't improve or develop as fast as the Leafs like to. In this case, if you were Dubis and Leafs management, would you consider trading a guy like Justin Hall or would you keep him for one more season and worry about it next summer? Moving on, another player who I think could be dealt for the right price is defenseman Jake Muzzin. Uh, right now, besides Morgan Riley, he is the Leafs' second highest paid defender, coming in at 5.625 per for two more years. Back in the day, Muzzin was actually a pretty decent ad for the Leafs a few years back, but in terms of age, he's now getting up there. He'll be turning 34 early next year, and he also had some bad luck with injuries and missed quite some time due to concussion issues. This might be an unpopular opinion, but if you were Dubis, and if you can find the right deal to unload Muzzin and his big contract, would you do it? If you were to ask me, I honestly think he might for a few reasons. One, Muzzin isn't getting younger. At 33-34, he's at an age where we might start to see a deep decline in his overall play in the next few years. Don't get me wrong, when he's at 100%, he's a very important player on the Leafs' blue line. On some nights, he looks like a legit top-pairing shutdown defender. But like they say, availability is the best ability. And over the past three seasons, Muzzin has missed a good amount of games in two of the three. So it's fair to say that he's a bit injury prone. And watching him play last year, he definitely had some good moments. But there were definitely some nights where he looked slow and it seemed like the injuries might have been catching up to him. At the same time, if we look at the Leafs roster, there's a little bit of a logjam on the left side with Riley, Brody, Muzzin, Giordano, and Sandine all being capable to play on the left side. So losing Muzzin might not be as devastating as some think. In that, this could actually make him expendable. Now, some people may argue that you can move Brody on the right side, but to me, the math still doesn't really add up as there are still four players capable of playing on the left-hand side and only three spots available. Therefore, on some bad nights, Muzzin could be playing second pairing or third pairing minutes. And do the Leafs really want to do that while paying him almost $6 million? I'm not too sure. With that said, the Leafs need every little bit of cap space they can get right now. And ideally, a salary dump trade for Muzzin and his 5.625 cap hit could go a long way in freeing up some money, especially to address other issues on the roster, such as locking up a number one goalie and signing a few of their younger RFA that still needs a contract. Overall, I think trading Muzzin could work out for the Leafs not only money-wise, but if they're able to bring back a younger and cheaper roster player who's less injury prone. It might also give them a few assets for future trades and also give their lineup more flexibility both on defense and offense. So once again, if you were Dubis and Leafs management, would you consider trading Muzzin or would you rather keep him here for the next few years? Yeah, so let me know if you agree or disagree with what I said in this video. Feel free to comment below and share some of your thoughts and I'll see everybody next time.